All right. Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly. I am excited today. We're actually doing something a little different. As you can tell, it is what, 8.30 here on the West Coast. Uh, so that's close to like midnight on the East Coast. And for those who are watching all over the, the world, I mean, I don't even know what time it is there, but, but I, I absolutely love this idea. Kevin, this was your idea. Um, so, <laughs> so before I even introduce you, Kevin, I'm going to introduce your idea. And that was this whole concept of doing MagMod, how I shot it after dark. Uh, That's which, right. <laughs> which, I, which I love. Um, and so here we are doing it in the evening time. Um, and I can't wait to share your photos with everybody. But before we get into that, uh, let's have you introduce yourself. Tell everyone where you're from and who you are. Sure. So uh, my wife and I, we own the business holding CoPhoto. Um, we are just we're based right out of right east of Los Angeles. We're about 45 minutes. OK, um, I was just telling you a second ago, the coolest thing about that is we're like an hour, hour and a half from everything in Southern California. So deserts mountains, beaches, downtown LA, the tip of San Diego, like we have everything at our fingertips. So yeah. in the photos that we'll, you'll see, there's a lot of variety because of where we are. Um, we've been shooting weddings now, this is our ninth season. Um, we started in 2013, yeah, that's about right. So we've been doing this for a long time. We're a long time MagMod user. Uh, yeah. We focus on weddings, my wife does boudoir and we do a little bit of commercial work. So we do a little bit of everything, but mostly Actually, now it's mostly boudoir and, and weddings. So yeah. that's great. No, that's awesome. Hey, I want to make sure we're, we're getting a few people that are hitting that little like button. Guys, as you jump in, as you see this, uh, please give us a comment. Throw a comment in the MagMod community. Let us know. I say the easiest comment is just let us know where you're watching from um, because that's always fun for us to kind of see where people are tuning in from. So please just, just chime in, let us know. Um, the interesting part is if there's a, for those again, who are watching the Magmon community, there's a link on top. And if you click that, that actually allows the software for us to see your name and your picture. If you don't click it, that's fine. It just comes up anonymous and that's, that's cool as well. I can see you in the community, but, uh, but definitely let us know where you're watching from. So Kevin, I, I gotta say though, you had mentioned an hour and a half uh, it, that kind of depends on traffic in Southern California. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. I've done yeah, a wedding on the 405 and we try to travel from like. Like, I mean, we had traveled down the 405 and it was, I mean, literally maybe five miles. And I think it took us like an hour and a half. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, self-employed, I, I, us and the retired people are driving at the rate at the same time, you know, not yeah. rush hour. So, <laughs> so true. Yeah. Hey, we got somebody watching from Mexico. Actually, you know what I'm going to awesome. do, Kevin? I'm going to, before we jump into these photos, I'm going to quickly just pull us up on my phone. Um, there we are. And that way I can actually see, oh, Wani Juan. Dude, you got Wani Juan watching you. Juan, that guy is amazing. He's one of the incredible talent out there in Mexico, so. I gotta figure most people are up editing right now because this is like my prime editing time right now. So hopefully, hopefully that all works Good. out. So. That, when you had mentioned it, when you're like, hey, can we do it at 8.30? We'll do it like after dark. I thought that would be a great opportunity for people, like you said, to edit and just kind of tune in, listen in on the side, maybe yeah. put on a second monitor or something, so. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I also wanna mention, if you guys are missing this on in the MagMod community, you're joining us late. We're also recording it and we do throw it up on YouTube as well. So you can watch it there. So with all of that, Kevin, I want to jump into your images. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we do that, can we actually share your Instagram with everybody? Let's, uh, sure. yeah, it's just, it says it says down below. Yeah, holding and photo. Let's, let's throw it up on the, on the screen real quick. I just want to show everyone. Um, this is the holding co photo dude. I love, you got a good following already, which is fantastic. Um, some amazing photos. So guys, jump in here. If you want to message Kevin or get a hold of him, this would be a great way. Kevin and Julia kind of reach out to them, send them a DM there. Um, incredible stuff. And then also here's your website. So holdingcophoto.com. Again, just absolutely beautiful photos. Um, love your galleries. Good stuff, man. Really, really good. Thank stuff. you so much. Thank you. All right. So with that all said, we got through all the business part of it. I want to jump into the photos because we are actually in for a treat. And the reason I say that is I always get kind of a sneak peek uh, at everyone's photos. But I think what's cool, Kevin, is you way you organize this is you kind of organized it in sets where you said, okay, these five photos is using this same technique. And then we jump into this other one. It's a different technique and another one, different technique. So I think we're going to go over like three or four different techniques tonight. And, I, and it's very instructional and I, I look forward, you know, to really sharing this information or having you share this information with our, our uh, audience. So okay. Fantastic. ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, awesome. All right. Let me pull up a little Lightroom action here and we are going to shoot over to this screen and I'm going to throw our little circles up here so we can chat about it. Although, you know, it looks so much better without us. That's <laughs> fancy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, We're I'll, distracting. I'll, <laughs> I'll throw us up here in a second. First off, tell us about this shot and you know, and how you shot it. Yeah, so this is a wild one. So it was an engagement session. We were down in downtown LA. 
This is Daniel and Anya. In fact, I just shot their wedding this past weekend. And we were supposed to go up to the Walt Disney Concert Hall. It's like one of the places everybody goes into in Southern California. It's like you have to shoot there. Yeah. Um, and what was cool about it was it was like towards the tail end, I guess. I mean, we're kind of the tail end of COVID, not really, but we kind of are. Anyways, the upstairs of it was totally shut down. So we took a couple photos up front and I'm like, man, I just drove. Well, this is about two hours because it was around sunset. <laughs> um, but I drove all this way. I can't go to the place. So I'm like, hey, guys, like we're just going to have to get crazy, creative. We're just going to do something I've never done before. Let's just walk around and see what happens. In fact, this photo... Um, this was in front of the Los Angeles Water and Power District building. Again, it's one of those places. If you're from LA, you know where yeah. this is at because you, I've you get the whole. There. Yeah, yeah. So right in front, there's this huge glass structure. It's about 25 feet wide, and yeah. there's these panes of glass that go down this whole way. And I was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna try something." I even told them, "I was like, I'm gonna try something. This could either be awesome or it's going to be awful. So let's give yeah, it a try. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. So, and that was honestly not just this photo, but because I was out of my comfort zone and I had to be creative and come up with new stuff, it was by far my most favorite engagement session that I've done in probably years. Yeah. So very, very simply, all these ones that we're going to go with, uh, show first are all with a single speed light. It's nothing that crazy. I'm not using strobes. I'm not using multiple lights for this first section. They're all done basically with the similar um, procedure and techniques, uh, just in different areas. And what's cool about it is I think for your audience or, is that all you need is a camera and one speed light to make something like this happen. You know, and a little bit of, you know, luck, to be honest. You know, <laughs> I just stuck, I just put them at the end. You can see there's like this little sliver of them. I uh -huh. stuck my camera with the 7200 in there and just did a couple tech uh, practice shots. And then I was dancing for like three minutes because it was just so cool and so different than anything I'd done or seen in a long time. This is probably my favorite photo of the I, last I, year that I've taken. So I just love hearing that I'm not the only one that dances when it gets an exciting. Encounter, <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Do you, Trevor, do you have like a, a, a saying that you do to yourself uh, when you do something good? I don't, I don't have a saying. Mine's, holy, I, mine's, mine's holy buckets. So for whatever reason, <laughs> when I do a really good shot, like my couple knows because I say holy buckets. I don't know where it came from. That's but funny. that's what happens. What, so, you know, here's a, here's a little fun trivia fact. You know how photographers, you know, when they look at the back of their camera, you know, they call that chimping, right? You know where Correct. chimping yeah. comes from? I don't. So, I should, but I don't. It, the reason they call it chimping is because you look at the back of your camera and you go, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you get excited, right? <laughs> yes. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So let's do this. Let's actually, I'm going to go back to this photo. But before you actually tell us, because you were talking about shooting down those planes, I actually want to go over to the next photo real quick because sure. I want you to just explain kind of just the simple light setup that essentially used in this shot and this shot and this shot. Um, but this is sometimes a very, I say simple, but it's actually a difficult kind of technique to get that perfect rim light, that perfect silhouette. So tell us yeah. kind of what you did here and then maybe we can go back and just kind of add a little bit more how you got that crazy effect. So certainly, yeah, cause all these are all kind of the same. Either I put something in the front in the foreground or something in the background of the sides, but, um, this is kind of like our go-to because it's something that's a little bit different. You know, just that nice backlit shot. It's something super creative. That's kind of like our brand is, you know, on the creative side. So um, we do take photos of like people front lit, but for a lot of times my go-to is this backlight. So this was on top of, uh, in LA, downtown LA, this was on top of a high rise, probably like on the 10th floor or something like that, one of those apartment buildings. And we were on a helicopter pad or something like that. And <laughs> when I when I exposed for the background, all I saw were these little dots and I loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. so cool. And those were windows. Uh, from all the different high rises in downtown LA. And so with MagMod, you know, it's just <laughs> simply take, you know, slapping on a CTO gel to match the background. So I exposed for the background, nice. getting, getting my exposure proper, getting where I want it to be. And then you know, I just play with my, you know, dial up top to get the, 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 the amount of power that I want with my, my flash. The thing about this that I, that I think is probably a teachable moment is to get that proper silhouette on all these shots that you're going to go through is 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 the little the little trick is actually to stick it behind the groom's head or the taller person's can always grooms right but the taller person's head okay directly so, behind so are you so how far back behind the couple are you putting the flash generally six to eight feet 
Okay, six to eight feet, and you're yeah. on a stand, so you're about, let's say if the if the guy's 5'10", 6 foot, you have it raised to about 5'8", yes. or so, like you're literally right about the level of their head? Yeah, if there's an x-ray, that flash is like right behind his, his ear. Okay. Maybe a little higher than his ear. Mm -hmm. Love it. No, that's really, you know what's interesting? I, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I look at that, and I even look at some of these, it almost seems like light is coming from below a little bit, but but you're saying it's actually, it is about his height. And I guess maybe it's bouncing off their shirt and, you know, her, her you know, uh, blouse Correct. or whatever, the dress. It's bouncing all, all over in this area when, yeah. they're, when they're facing each other. Yeah. That's and so then cool. if you notice on, on some of these, I'll, I'll dial it up a little bit to get that spillage across their face. And so that's caused by just upping your power or a lot of times if I'm in a pinch, I'll just up my or lower my, I guess it'd be my aperture. I would, I would, I would make it, you know. If this was shot at 2.8, 2.2, something like that, I'd go down to 1.8. Okay. You know, 1.6, something like that. And then that little bit of extra power on camera, because it's just a little dial, it's a little easier on the fly. Yeah. Um, that's where you get that little spillage coming across their face, which I like a lot. So this same setup, this one light, and you just had one CTO gel on it. Um, yeah. You did. And again, you did. Some, sometimes, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'm a, I just, I have a problem with that. My wife tells no. me that all the time, so I apologize. Can, dude, you can interrupt. This is your show, man. So I'm the one interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, like with the color, a lot of times uh, I want, when I'm in this type of situation, these first few, I'm, there's nothing, if you want to go back to that other one, I'll, I'll explain my kind of my thought process. The very first so, one? So the second one. Okay. The other two, I kind of had to make up where I thought the light source was coming from. I wanted to create an illusion with this photo is really what I want to have happen. I don't want it to be obvious that there's a flash on somebody. Yeah. Like that's not our style. I think it's really cool. Like I, I'm really um, inspired by film and movies and TV shows and there's shows out there now, like, you know, if you can imagine sitcoms, right? Like the office or friends, everything's lit perfectly. Everything's the same, but a lot of lately, like shows like this is us. That's really where I saw it a few years back. The lighting is just natural light. They're they're like in the kitchen and there's like this shadow going across their face and it feels more real that yeah. way, yeah. right? So that's the kind of illusion that I try and do with these photos. So I look at this this thing, I, I underexposed it because this is probably wasn't at dark. This was probably near dusk, but I was shooting into these buildings. So I underexposed it and I get all this orange. So I'm like, that's easy. I'll just match the orange, you know? So a lot of times, like if, the, if there was something red, or there was, which I, they're coming up, there, there was red up light, so I matched it to be red. Um, I'm just kind of matching what's there. Or a lot of times I'll do the exact opposite. So that way that there's some sort of a complementary color going on. Yeah. Similar to your orange, your orange background and my blue background. Right? right? So. Look at that. I got to bring that up. I mean, look how yours looks <laughs> a lot better than mine. Kevin. But, but I got, I mean, we got something going on here that looks pretty good. I like it. I think so. I think so. Um, so, so then with that in mind, Kevin, let's go back to this first shot real quick. So you were explaining mm -hmm. that you shot between, um, some glass panes. Let's see if I can bring this back up. Um, so you have them basically they're between glass panes. Is the, is the effect kind of that motion effect that, that double triple, you know, is that some kind of composite? Is that, you know, is that just the glass? No. What is that? This is all in, this is all on camera. And so on this one, I shot this, um, uh, with a, with a, um, with the mag grid because I didn't want the spread. Like if I did this with a sphere or just by itself with the spread being really wide, mm -hmm. that light would spread all over the place, right? So one of my favorite go-tos is either just a grid or a grid with a um, with a mag gel on there. Yeah. So this one was just a mag grid. I use it all the time. And so that's why I was able, and I got this a little bit closer. That way it's only getting like their front profiles Yeah. with the light. And then, you know, I was just kind of moving around. You know, took a little bit of finagling to get them in the right spot. But when yeah. I got it, you know, then it just like it, it, all these different things looks like a sci-fi movie poster, right? That's the first thing that came to mind. And again, the, the, the emphasis on the color on this one was the building back there had blue. And so I shot this on tungsten with the bare no gel on this flash just just to control it with the mag grid and that made it look all those blues there's a little bit of green in there and so i liked this one on that cooler tones on this one um, but their skin is still you know nice and warm and beautiful which is kind of like again with our brand it, like we go a little bit on the warmer side we like being more creative and so this yeah. was just like right up our alley and so i was super excited when we got this one 
I love it. I love it. So basically the only difference between this one and this one is that you put the light a little bit closer to him. You put a mag grid on it. And that way you kind of kept that light from spilling everywhere. Um, and really just focused on kind of that front of their face there, but you still, the position of the light, it was still right behind his head. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Basically pointed right into his back ear. Mm -hmm. Got it. Nice. Yeah. So my assistant or whatever, I'm like, Hey, just put that there. I'm like, just get him right in the back of the ear right there. That's what I want. So. Nice. I love it. Super cool. And I, I totally can see where you're talking about how using your gel, it, you would you would think that that was just them like in this perfect moment in this perfect light, almost like yeah. the lights hitting coming from those windows or something. Right. That's the, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's some light or something up there and it's a little more obvious when there's like a sunset or something like that. But in that yeah. one, it's uh, yeah. So I know we have a few more images that use the same setup and I want to make sure to show everybody. It was kind of funny because you had mentioned, you, you know, you sent them over to me and you're like, you know, we don't have to go through all these. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like we have to go through all these. These are amazing. But so tell me now on this one, is, a, is which setup would you say it's more like the first or second? I would kind of think the second, right? Second. Yeah. Okay. 100% so, the second one. Because this so, one I want spread. Again, this is a single flash. Yeah. You know, so this one, the spread, the other, the first one, I'm controlling it to be very narrow. This one, my spread was probably 24 millimeter. It was just like, I wanted to light up everything. Yeah. Uh, Cause this is you're lighting up the trees. back of the trees. Yeah. 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 And it was something I noticed earlier in the day. Um, I go to this, this venue a lot and, um, I'm always trying to do something different. And I walked by there and there was a tree that had dark red leaves. And this was just a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, man, I wonder what that would look like being backlit. And so, during the, during the reception and I went, uh, me and my wife, we set up the shot, you know, did a couple practice shots with her up there. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we call, we're, you know, we try to be very fast with the couple. So we go back to the dance floor because we don't want to pull them away. I'm like, hey, can I borrow you for five minutes? And we sell it with exuberance. Like, I'm like, listen, this is a really cool shot. Yeah. I really want to take it for you guys. We'll be in and out in five minutes. Is that cool? And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So then we ran up there. I already had it planned out. I already had my settings done, everything. They walked up. I took like three different exposures. There's one on our Instagram where I use atmosphere aerosol as well. Cause that's one of our go-to things is to use that as well. Um, and, um, anyways, we do like it with all these shots too. There's always variations of them. Yeah. It's going to be in there in that middle, middle top. If you can scroll through there, you'll, you'll be able to see it. Let's see middle scroll up scroll up here yeah so right in the middle uh that wait which one so the middle you have to click right on now? it because it's uh it's at the very top in the middle you, the it's not showing but if you click on it you can scroll through oh 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 this couple right here yeah that couple that's the couple God. so it. scroll okay. scroll through so you'll see other ones this was kind of just like a little photo dump oh dude the whole set so there's the shot and there's the one with Dude. the atmosphere aerosol. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. I love that. So pretty, dude. Wow. Yeah. So we went up there. We did a couple different things. You know, uh, a lot of times we'll even throw like a front flash on them just so they have like some variety. Mm -hmm. But I, again, just, just for what I like to put out into the world, it's a little bit more on the creative and colorful side. So I love it. I actually, I really dig silhouettes because it's kind of like this, uh, you almost have to fill in the blank. You kind of see it, mm -hmm. you kind of have to fill everything else in. I don't know. It's just, it's so romantic too. I love it. Yeah, um, it's my favorite. <laughs> good stuff, man. Really good stuff. So, so then just to share, I think there's, yeah, we got two more here that are similar, same type of setup. Mm -hmm. Is there anything different that you did with these ones then? Same exact thing. This one, you, uh, there was probably a, uh, a grid cause I was trying to control the spread. Okay. A little bit again, because it, and then this one just had some twinkle lights. This is, they're sandwiched in between two sets of twinkle lights. So my favorite thing is when I'm walking around during the days, if there's twinkle lights, I know I can do this shot every single wedding. It's always a little different. You yeah. know, the shapes of the vocal balls in the front are always a little bit different because of the, the space or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this was probably 200 millimeter to get, you know, or probably, probably a little lower, maybe like a hundred, 150, something like that, um, to get the size of the bokeh in the front. So so good uh, but yeah all pretty much the same what i love though is on this one spe specifically i always try and have like some sort of emotion happening i think what happens a lot of times um, i'm sorry my cat just jumped on the table so i'm probably a little sick. <laughs> i knew that was going to happen at some point uh um but what i love there still has to be a moment mm -hmm. right i always set up my light i set up my composition and then i wait for that moment 
And so on this one, I kind of, you know, had them do a couple prompts and then I got that smile and I just shot away. So, so is there a favorite prompt, by the way, we got, uh, somebody just said saludos desde Colombia. Let's see. I wasn't see who that was. Uh, is there a particular prompt that you like to, uh, Oh, Castro, uh, Castro Martinez Rembreto. Rembreto. Awesome. Uh, is there a particular prompt that you like to typically share like with people to get them laughing or anything? Oh man, there's several that we have in our back pocket. Um, we have one called the color game. Now, so some of these are like, we kind of use them earlier in the day just to kind of loosen them up. At this point, they're already having a good time. They've had a couple drinks. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, hey, listen guys, I just need a real big fake laugh. And that always works. It turns into a real laugh. That's kind of like, <laughs> at the end of the night, that's my go-to. But I've been building that relationship throughout the day, engagement sessions, you know, pre-wedding meetings, all that sort yeah. of stuff to where you know, this is probably again after dark that's why it's so perfect all these are like night shots so kevin um, is is the color game is that the one where you say on the count of three i want you guys to look yeah. at each other and say a color so yeah. you, you want to know what's funny when i first started doing that and i don't know who i picked it up from it might have been i don't know i don't know either I, I mean i've been doing it for years but um yeah i'm trying to remember what's the name of that guy that used to play the guitar he's very romantic jess josh joss i don't know not Joss. It's not Joss and Tree, but um, they're yeah, awesome. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. but um, I'm trying to remember who it was. But you know, I it's so funny. The first time I started doing that, I actually told people, "Hey, uh, I want you to look at each other and say a color." And the first couple I did it with, they named the color and they're laughing and you know, and it was so much fun. So so for those who aren't familiar with it, all the way I do it, Kevin, you can tell me if you do it differently. But I say, okay, I want you guys to look at me, and then on the count of three, I want you to look at each other, and we're gonna say a color. We're gonna see if you guys guess the same color. And so I go one, two, three, they look at each other. One says blue, one says red, they laugh, they, you know, whatever. And so it's really cute. So if you see any photos on my website where they're looking at each other laughing, that's probably it. But it, <laughs> it was so funny because I did that the first time and they nailed it. And the second time they nailed it. So then I started calling it the, um, like to see, how did I say it? Like basically to see how perfect they are for each other or what I'm trying yeah. to call it. Yeah. But but what was so funny was that the first time I said that I go, hey guys, every time I do this, the couples nail it. So we're gonna see just how perfect <laughs> right. you guys are. And I yeah, did it. Of course, a couple, yeah. yeah, and then of course they got it yeah. wrong. They didn't guess the same color. And then they're like, oh man. And I was like, no no no, well, let's do it again. And we tried like three tries and they could not get this great photos. But for some reason they felt like they weren't perfect for each other afterwards. So I felt terrible. Are they still so, married? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. What if there's any correlation there? But yeah, I do it the same way. Usually I do them in a couple different, um, a couple different um, poses, uh -huh. three in a row, kind of rapid fire, and we do it. And the, what I tell them is like, listen, the world record is four. Like four is the best <laughs> I've ever gotten in 10, in 10 months. So they're like, okay, let's do this. Like I can totally oh, do it. So to try to get the same color? Yeah, four in a row, they've gotten it. Because the first two are easy. Their favorite color, their favorite color, that's yeah, easy. Yeah. Their second favorite color, that where it gets hard. And so the best ever was four. So that's cool. That's cool. I love it. Just in competition, you, you know, you have to sell these things with exuberance. You know, right. if you're excited about it, they'll be excited about it and they'll do whatever you want. Yeah. And, but it always does really, really great things. I that's remember awesome. where a lot of these prompts came from. I'm going to name drop Brady Perrier because he's probably going to watch this and go like, I told him that seven years ago. <laughs> uh, the other one that he gave me was another one called Sexy Batman. Actually, he called it Sexy Beast, I think, but I changed it to Sexy Batman. That's my other favorite. Well, now you got to tell us what that is. Are you, you're intrigued, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one's where they're, they're in a pose. Usually he's standing behind her, kind of whisper something in their ear. And so they take turns repeating what I want them to say in their best Batman voice. So, you know, like that <laughs> gravelly, I'm Batman. And that one works phenomenally. Wait, so you have them, so you tell them what you want them to say and they just repeat it in their best Batman voice? Yeah. And I always do the same thing. So I usually start with her and no, I start with him and I say something nice, like you look so beautiful tonight. And then he just does it in his Batman voice. And it's so silly. So they start laughing. And then I have her do it. And every time that she does it, I say, sir, you are a sexy beast. And then they just laugh. That's the whole thing. So That's I got sexy beast from Brady. So I don't want to get a text from him later saying that I stole it from him. But I did steal it from him. I love that. I love that. For sure. Um, by the way, we got a few comments that I'm going to address here in just a second. Actually, Tanya, Tanya has a, a good one. Tanya Parada is watching. Um, but before I do that real quick, I want to mention... Um, one thing that I kind of, kind of similar to that, what I do is all, and again, I don't know who I got this from, but Brady, Brady's amazing. So I'm glad you mentioned Brady yeah. career. Um, but I, I tell people, I say, okay, you know, we typically get them in that kind of T pose where 
you yeah. know, she's looking forward. He's like kind of, you know, facing towards her right by her ear. Mm-hmm. You know, I might, I might mm-hmm. say bite the ear a little bit or something like that. But then I'll typically say, um, okay, in your sexiest Spanish accent, I want you to tell her what you ate for breakfast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cheerios or whatever, you know, <laughs> right, right, right. but but typically they don't even know what to say, and they'll you know, but um, but yeah, it's funny it, it, those little things. I love that, and honestly, if I had somebody taking my photos, I would love if they just did those things with my wife and I, because yeah. otherwise, I'm just I don't know what to do. I'm I've shot so many people, but I don't even know how to pose with my own wife. And so, if you can just give me some kind of prompt or something to do or say or act. Um, it makes it so much easier. So I'm glad to hear that, that you're doing it that way. Yeah. So. And then they get, then we get a genuine smile from them. So you have oh. to, so if like for us, we always play with games. Like I'm like, when they show up, they're really scared. You know yeah. what I mean? They're, you know, sometimes have to have an adult beverage to kind of loosen up a little bit. And I'm like, listen, we're just going to walk around. My wife and I are, we're going to just have fun and play games for the next hour and a half. How's that sound? Yeah. No, like, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah. All right. So I got to address a few of these comments. First off. Yeah, let's do it. So as uh, oh it's it's really cool. Uh Inum Trio is watching, which is awesome. Love that guy. Um and by the way, Castro Castro say started using Magmon. It's been a game changer for him. So thank you so much, Castro. Appreciate that. All right. So Tanya, <laughs> Tanya says, uh, did you both plan to have matching beards? Now, first off, I gotta say it's something. Not the first time. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no. First off, Kevin, your beard is amazing. This oh, this is thanks. this is like That's this is one. terrible. I I have <laughs> 13 year olds with more hair than this. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to grow this out, but I just have uh, no hair whatsoever. And I, I I actually I started growing it out. I don't know if anyone saw the episode a couple of weeks ago. And then I shaved it, and my wife's like, "Why'd you shave it?" And so I told her, I said, "All right, I'll try to grow it one more time." But dude, if I could grow hair like yours, man, I would be wearing that all the time. No oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a it's a uh, definitely passion project for sure. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Passion project. Um, we also got Elizabeth Lloyd, um, who's amazing. She says, Hey guys, beautiful work, Kevin. So, um, and then Tanya also said, Kevin and Julia are the real deal. So do you get to see Tanya very often out there in Southern California? We get to, yeah. Um, we haven't since COVID, but, um, you know, we've done a lot of, uh, zoom calls and I've second shot for her That's awesome. a few times. Yeah. That's same thing with Marlies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have, nice, we have a pretty nice, have a nice little close knit uh community out here of kind of mag modders that are all in southern california so good if you guys any are getting married anywhere in the world just go to southern california and you got kevin and tanya and marlise and pie and man you got the whole works yeah there. countless yeah countless others yeah and we're all competing against each other it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> oh you're like that's awesome yeah that's um awesome. Hey, real quick, I'm going to answer one more question here that popped in. And then after that, I want to go back to your photos. I know we still have a lot of photos to talk about and some really cool techniques that I promised for everybody. Um, yeah. And uh, somebody, somebody just said, hey, sexy beast. It's so funny because I'm seeing it over here. It's popping up. I can't. It, all it says is Facebook user. So I literally have to come over and look at my phone. Oh, Cynthia, Cynthia. She, thanks, Cynthia. Appreciate that. Um, so Ritzy from New Zealand, he's asking, or she, he, she, I'm not sure who it is, uh, asking a quick question. They're asking the difference between the magma gels, the first version versus the new one. So the the, the original magma gels versus the pro gels. Um, Kevin, do you have the pro gels yet? Have you been able to get those? I do not. I still have the same ones I got from seven years ago because they're still fantastic. They are. They're actually they're they're not even labeled. Polycarbonate. They're not even labeled yet. <laughs> yeah, they weren't even labeled yet. Way back. You got the dinosaurs. Way back. Right? Yeah, um, fantastic. They're still yeah. <laughs> no, that that's all. well. We got to get you some new ones. But the uh, the the older ones, the ones that are Kevin has been using, um, and that's I love that you're still using them because they they are still mm-hmm. very valid even today. Mm-hmm. Um, and the new ones, the biggest difference is the embedded magnets. So I I, I don't want to go back to my bag, but they actually have magnets built into them. And so now when you take it out, you don't have to look for a mag gel holder, or you don't have to put it in the mag sphere or anything like that. Sometimes I would even just sandwich them. But you don't have to do any of that. You just pop them right on. Um, that's the biggest difference is is the embedded magnet. So if you guys haven't checked that out, go to the website, magnetmod.com. You can go check out all those new uh, pro gels. In fact, actually, we just launched a video. So, um, And we're going to get into some of the color here in just a second. So that's probably a good segue. But let's before we go into that, let's just quickly cover these last. So we got this image, and then we got one more with this single shot. Um, and then we're going to go into these other ones. Uh, was there anything different or that you did with this one here? I actually... Sorry, I, I asked you a question that I'm going to cut you. This reminds me of that one with the, the the lights behind it. It looks natural, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, that's the, this was on Coronado Island looking back towards San Diego. And 
again, what I love about it is, is just, I want to look as natural as possible. Like, um, and so I'm matching the colors behind it. Even the one before it, I try to use the same CTO of like those twinkle lights. Now, again, yeah. you can go completely off the reservation and do something that's complimentary a lot of times. And I think that looks cool. And a lot of times I'll do that in the next section. But for the most part, I try to look at the scene and go like, what colors can I pull from this and make it look as natural as possible? Makes sense. Love it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hide this for a second because I'm going to bring up this next. Uh, oh, we actually we got one more. Same same type of setup. Now, this one actually kind of, I, I will challenge you on this. It kind of looks like that flash might be behind her head on this one. Was it? Or was it still? You remember? Get up close. I mean, most of the time, no. But he was okay. really tall. Got so it. it's very possible that probably what happened on this one, um, they probably was in the right spot, but I got down pretty low to get that streak of light that was still in that sky. You know, and um, she also, she has that beautiful wavy, you know, big hair and stuff. And that's probably grabbing that light as well. So yeah, that brings up a good point too, Trevor. So the re another reason why I like to put it in the taller person, you know, mm -hmm. um, in this case, the groom's uh, head uh, is because it'll mostly hit him and he has shorter hair. So there's less follicles for the light to pick up on. And so the fall off will end up going towards the, you know, a lot of times the, in this case, the bride yeah. or the person who's a little shorter. So that way it's not as bright in their hair. Yeah. Kind of, it's just like kind of a balance game. So that's that kind of like sense. my go-to and it works perfectly. But yeah, same, same exact thing. Again, I'm looking at the scene I underexpose. I did one with the flash in front, but I liked the one from behind just because it, it, it like pulls from that streak of light that's going right down the middle uh, from the sunset from there. So Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. By the way, Sam Barker says, Kevin the Goat, always an inspiration. <laughs> so a little shout Thanks, out to Sam. Sam. And then Tanya, actually, she mentioned the new gels um, that she loses them a lot less now that they don't have to interchange them out of the holders, which totally makes sense because you can kind of toss them in. They all stick together and... So I guess that's a good point. Maybe maybe Magma needs to start selling them that way. You know, pro gels lose a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right. So Kevin, I'm going to hide this again because I, I want everyone to be able to see this image really well. But tell us about this shot and then we're going to kind of get into a new set of, you know, uh, light setup. So tell us about it. Sure. So this was, a, this was at, I want to say this is the California Club, maybe the Jonathan Club in downtown LA. They're right next door basically to each other. Um, this was a, a wedding and on this, in this one, there wasn't, it was at dark, it was at night, at dark. It was at night, it was a night shot. And in this one, when I used a, a orange gel or CTO gel, um, it kind of blended in too much with the scene. And so on this one, I wanted to use something complimentary. Um, a lot of times I'll ask the bride, hey, what's your favorite color? Um, Cause maybe they'll, this will mean something a little bit more to them because it's something that goes with them or goes with their decor of their house. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a, a wall art type question on the day of. Um, but a lot of times, other times I'll be like, you know, this one, you know, with orange and purple or blues look really good. Orange is kind of like a regal type photo, a color. And with this backdrop, I was like, purple would look really great. So they were standing right in front of some curtains. I put my flash again. This is a single, again, it's still a single speed light. Um, I exposed for the background, got the chandeliers where I wanted it to be, and then just shot up, you know, a, a flash with a purple gel. Yeah. And then that's probably that's probably my phone or a prism uh, down below, just getting the reflection. So nice, nice. So what colors do you remember that those curtains were normally? Were they? I want to say they were off white. No, okay. they were. There's black ones or dark ones, kind of okay. creating that framing around them. But yeah. it was like a white or off white. Probably like a tan, nice. if I remember right. Yep. And is there, you know, and, and it kind of asks this question. I don't know if there's a really a good answer for it, but it seems like if I were watching this show and I saw this photo, I would wonder where do you start your flash power on something like this? Do you start it at full power? Do you start it, you know, at one one twenty eighth power, like really low or really high? Kind of where do you start? Yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, I remember when we first started, I had there was a lot of trial and error. Uh -huh. Right. So you just kind of like pick and try and like look and before, you know, again, I'm, I'm getting to be, I'm really dating myself, but now they have it where you can control it on the dial on top yeah. of your, your hot shoe. Well, that wasn't the case years <laughs> ago. So I'd have to run over there and on the five eighties or whatever, change the number. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. but nowadays, like it's, it's almost second nature. I could probably look at the scene and probably guess that it was probably one sixteenth. 
Okay. Maybe one thirty second, but for the most part, it's one sixteenth or one thirty second. I can almost walk into any place and just kind of go, oh, that's probably what needs to be, and it kind of comes second nature now. So. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I think that's a good place to even start because then you know immediately if I need to dial up or down, I have some room to work with, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, what flashes do you use, Kevin? Um, actually, right now I'm, I'm using uh, some Young Nuos. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't use anything that's you know I could buy four of those for the same price as one Canon. So, dude, I. Yeah. I I tell people all the time. I it's funny because every time I ask that question, if anyone mentions Young Nuos, they kind of like, uh, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they work, and and you're they right work. that for the price, the only the only thing that I had go wrong with two Young Nuos that I bought in the past was um, the battery cover. When I would try to close it, both of them broke on me. Um, not the cover itself, but just the slides where it slides in, and it's probably because I just was so used to just doing it quickly, you know, just pushing it down and sliding it up that I, I just broke it and I wasn't really careful with it. But that's the only thing that kind of upset me after a few months. I'm like, I'm like, really? Cause then you couldn't use them. Your batteries wouldn't right. stay shut. So right. uh, that's the only issue I had. But, but I think other than that, they're good flashes, you know, for the price. They're fantastic. Yeah, yeah. They're fantastic. And if I break one, cause I'm using a flash a lot, you don't cry. Not a big deal. Not <laughs> yeah, big deal. You don't cry. <laughs> so they're all, I, I don't want to say they're disposable. <laughs> kind of. But they're kind of disposable. Yeah. They're, they're more disposable than an A1. <laughs> Let's just put yes. That. Yes. Uh, one last note on that last one. Yeah, the yeah. reason why I use the reflections is because there was a, there was a butt ugly um, carpet. I didn't like uh -huh. it. There was like all these different geometric shapes. It was too loud. So I just did, um, you know, sometimes people just do a reflection just to do it, but this was for a purpose, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, just to kind of block that out to where it wasn't some ugly carpet. So that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, there was a purpose behind it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. What about this one here? Yeah. So what I love about this one is sometimes you can't, you don't have a clear wall to like shoot up. Mm -hmm. And so we walked into this room and uh, there was this beautiful, huge chandelier. They're actually standing on top. This is Allie and Patrick. Um, this is at the California club for sure. And they were standing on top of a desk. Probably shouldn't say that out loud, but they were standing on top of this. They're standing on top of a desk to get height. And if you look right behind them, there's this lit up um, picture frame, or there's like a frame, a, a picture in there. And it was it was lit up, and I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. And so one of my favorite go tos is to use atmosphere aerosol behind them. It's a little fog in a can. Uh -huh. Shoot it behind them, and then all of a sudden you can have a backdrop anywhere. Yeah. And then I just then I just shoot the flash. And, and on this one there was red up lighting. And that was kind of her um, bridesmaids colors and things like that. So I felt pretty confident that she would like that color. And plus, it's just it's just an awesome pop of color. And I just put them in a really dramatic pose, have them hold for a couple times till I get it right. And, you know, he had like a really cool portrait night shot like this. So, Dude, the hearts are like flying in like crazy on the chat here. They're like, nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> I don't know where they all came from, but suddenly there's and again, this is. Yeah, and again, and again, what I think is so cool, what I really wanted to showcase with these first five, six photos, whatever it was, is just how simple yeah. it is. They're all different. They all look different, but it's just a single flash that you can do all these really great creative shots. So so you use the atmosphere aerosol, and then you said you had one flash with the red gel. And did you have right. that just on the desk or on the ground, basically? No, more than likely, if I remember right, Julia was standing behind them and she was holding it up to get okay. a little bit higher. Because so, they're, probably, they're probably 10 feet off the ground right now. Okay. Is she aiming it towards yeah. them then? Yeah. Same. Okay. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Like That's just right. the yeah. back is back ear, the same exact thing, except now there's a layer of fog in front of them that yeah. just beautifully lights up. And you can see the spread wasn't that big because the spread would have been gigantic. There's very, it's very possible that there's a grid on this one. Just yeah. because of how controlled the spread is, is my guess. Love that, man. So, so yeah. good. Uh, yep. Tanya's saying, I got to try that. <laughs> She's like, I got to get some, try that atmosphere aerosol stuff. Uh, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Let's jump into uh, this next image over here. Now we're getting into kind of a different type of setup, right? Tell us about yeah, this. this is more, yeah, when I wanted to show this is because like we do, you know, the more traditional off-camera flash stuff. Um, believe it or not, my favorite is the MagSphere still. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it goes to like, you know, with a nice 
we're kind of getting technical stuff. I still love the uh, the Magbox, but the Magsphere, I think because I started with that, I just still love it because it's a little bit more cleaner lines. There's not as much softness to it, which again, for mm -hmm. me, it's more real because the sun in the sky is super small, right? So yeah. again, I'm trying to make this seem like it's not like studio light out on location. I want this to look as natural and genuine as possible. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like our go-to lighting a lot of times for like speeches, dance photos, uh, sparkler exits, which I think is the next one, uh, where we have a front flash. A lot of times we'll add a back, a back one too, to separate them from the background. I didn't have room on this photo, yeah. nor would it look natural. If I had sun coming through, or I might even use the sun to have them be separated from that background. But on this one, there's no, there was no natural light source back there. And so for my head, it didn't look natural to put one back there. You know what back, I mean? Which may be a faux pas of most people. Like you have to have a backlight. I don't know. But so, it didn't come natural. So I didn't do it. So what, what time of day was this shot at? Was this like after sunset or right around sunset? Or was this? This is probably time? dusk. Yes, yeah, it's okay. probably dusk. The, 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 yes, yeah, so this is, I mean, yeah. Right around the dusk. lights on the buildings are just starting to come on kind of thing. Got yeah, it. if you look at the reflection just to the right, you can kind of see there's some sunset. Because the sun was more towards, you know, in front of them, yeah. you know, camera left. It was more towards that direction, if I remember right. So, uh, and, and I love uh, the use of the MagSphere, especially in situations where you might have to Photoshop it. Did you Photoshop anything out of this one? Like, did you, ha was yeah. the MagSphere close enough where you had to take the stand out? 100%, yeah. So, um, Julia, again, because... On these shots, it, it, Julie is the moment master. Like when it comes to our business, like she's uh -huh. all moments, 100% of the time, she's yeah. the moment person. I'm more of the technical side, you know? So a lot of times I'll have like a technical shoot, but a lot of times she does it too and I'll hold it. But in this instance, I was I was taking the picture because I was probably laying in some water, it looks like, yeah. which sounds about right. And then Julie was just holding, you know, on a nano stand and then we just played it, you know, and get her out. Got it. You know? Take, take right. one with, one without, and we just put it together in Photoshop. There you go. Yeah. So for those who, who aren't familiar, we've talked about this in, in numerous how I shot it's in the past, but it's just shooting one shot with her out of the shot and then one with, and then that way you can just, you have something to Photoshop, uh, two different it's easy. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and real quick, I don't know if we mentioned it in the beginning. I know, uh, Julia is a huge part of the business. Obviously you guys, you know, 50, 50 type thing. Uh, yeah. she's, she's just not here cause she's out serving a friend tonight. Uh, someone that needs her help. And so, I just want to make sure that uh, she gets a shout out and I appreciate you talking about how, you know, we're her specialty, you know, being the moments. I think that's such a key part as well. So, yeah, we're like, we're like perfect partners and there's no way I would even want to do this business without her. So that's awesome, yeah. man. Good for you yeah. guys. That's really cool. Uh, we did have a question. Um, in fact, this is one that's not so much about the photo, but just, I don't, we haven't talked about this combination quite yet. So I don't know if it's something that you use, but I'll bring up the question. Um, in fact, you know what? Since they actually clicked the link uh, to show their name and stuff, I'm actually going to pull it up on screen here. How about that? Um, there we go. We'll bring it up like that. So, so Ritzy Studio is saying, why do people use the Mag Grid and then the Mag Sphere on top? Um, have you ever done that, Kevin? I know we haven't discussed it yet, but have you done that combination where you put the two on top of each other? All the time. In fact, I think the next photo is a sparkler exit, and that's my go-to is the is the grid with the sphere. So. So to answer Ritzy's question, what would you like, why do you choose to stack those two on top of each other? So again, I don't know if this is, if this is technically correct, but that's, okay. that's um, actually why I'm asking reason, you, because I know a lot, I mean, a lot of people have different reasons for it. Yeah. With the sphere by itself, it, the light just goes everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Like it hits everything, it bounces off each other and it's spreading all over the place. So the mag sphere gives it a little bit of a bigger surface area so the catch lights and everything's a little bit softer than just the grid by itself and but the grid still kind of narrows its focus a little bit so maybe it just hits the top of the mag sphere so it's still a little bit smaller yeah. and a little more controlled um but on sparkler exits that sparkler exits that's like my go-to and the spreads far less than if i just use the mag sphere yeah i the only, I find... the, the only downside sorry trevor no. i know i keep talking no please, please 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 uh, the only downside is you have to up your power yeah. by like two stops, but, yeah. but it's not a big deal, especially in the dark. So, yep. 
Um, yeah, I would say you, you nailed it as far as I'm concerned. I, the, the biggest thing is the mag grid, you're, you're definitely, you know, giving more of a, uh, kind of a 40 degree beam pattern, right? The, in other words, that light's going a certain direction. And for me, when I put the mag sphere on top of it, it just helps to kind of take that light to shadow and to kind of diffuse it a lot softer. So you don't get this like spotlight, like, boom, here's right. the light. It's kind of like, here's the light as it slowly spreads out. But it's, it, I like to compare it to stage lighting. I love going to Broadway musicals. Um, blame my mom for that. She used to always take me to ones. And I used to love looking at the stage lighting. And you'd always see kind of these spotlights, but then they would kind of just slowly transition out. The hard ones where it's like a hard circle or something, it seemed like it was almost too rough on your eyes. It was like, whoa, like, you yeah, know, when you yeah. see it just kind of fade out. And that's, that's to me is the mag sphere mag grid combo. It's like that spotlight effect, but it kind of fades on the edges, um, gives that a little bit of diffusion. So. Good stuff. Well, let's actually, you mentioned the next shot. Let's actually jump over to it real quick. So people love sparkler exits. So I look forward to showing, this yeah. is a good one, dude. This is a great sparkler exit. So tell us about this. Yeah, so the the modifiers on here, like we mentioned, was the sphere stacked on top of a grid. Mm -hmm. um, and then this was actually, Sam Barker was assisting me on this wedding, oh, cool. um, who, who made an appearance a minute ago. Um, <laughs> we're, we're really good pals. and. So I feel bad for him because he was running up and down the outside of this, uh, you know, camera left that group. Uh -huh. um, so what you can't see is he's booming it, you know, okay. over these people and he's running back and forth. And so this is a, this is at a serendipity gardens. It's a place I go to often in Southern California and they do sparkler exits, exits there. But what's cool is they have the really long ones. So you get like three or four tries at this thing, which is awesome. So <laughs> I love that. He goes first. I kind of practice on what I need to get. And then they go through once or twice, do some dips. And the last one, I always have them run because what I love, what I, again, the, 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 the kind of pigeonhole thing that I get into is when I'm thinking too technical about a photo is I literally just have them stand there and it's a, like a, like, they're like statues. And I've really tried in the last several years to like give some sort of not just emotion, but some movement in my, mm -hmm. my off camera flash. And so with this sparkler exit, you know, just having them boom it over and then poor Sam's running back and forth like three times. Um, and for the most part, he nails it every time. Not always, it's hard. <laughs> but especially when you're using this combination because if you look at the bottom, there's not a ton of spill. There's yeah, a little yeah. bit in front of her so you can kind of see the direction of where it's coming. Um, and also what's on this one in, in the background, there's a backlight, you know, because it's a total black background back there just to kind of separate them slightly, so. yeah. Okay, so it's a two light setup. You have one behind them, and then you have one with your assistant kind of running on the outside of the line, booming yes. it over the top, you know, pointing it down. Is that is that light modified at all? Oh, that's the one you said has a mag sphere mag mag grid. Correct. Correct. Very cool. Yeah, and you can really tell just because of how controlled the light is on the ground. If this was a sphere, it probably would get that whole floor and it would probably start coming up a little bit towards yeah. the, the crowd on the side. Um, which again is, isn't bad, but I, you know, our, our style is a lot more on the dramatic side, I guess. Yeah. So I like shadows. I like, you know, colors popping off the shadows. So we shoot in the dark a lot. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, this is, this is a phenomenal, uh, exit shot. Let me ask you, the, the thing that stands out to me the most is the foreground, uh, the spark yeah. in the foreground. You must've been using a longer lens for this. Yeah. This is 7,200. 7,200. Yeah. And so were you yeah. like far back off the, and where you zoomed in with the 200, like shooting it? Correct. 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 Do you, yeah, ever, and do you ever kind of direct the audience to kind of close the tunnel a little bit towards there? And or, I mean, so what I'll do it a lot of times I'm I, I, this is like, I'm on the list at this place. So like, I know the staff really well. So I'm always like, Hey, can you come to the end and just hold, Okay. you know, the yeah, there's two of them usually, and they'll come down with the lit sparkler. They'll do it. Okay. Now I'll be a liar if I told you I did that every single time because I don't. Yeah. Like I have, I have some sparklers that I've done against a black background, and I'll put them on top. Yeah, which yeah, I yeah. probably did on this one, but it, but I have done it where they're holding it, you know, with a sparkler yeah. in the foreground, and you get the same exact effect. That's actually that's a really good idea. You know, I've done that with um, where they write something. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah where I'll, I'll actually go and I've done, I've gone out by myself in the street 
you know, in a dark area and I've written things, you know, and then I'll, I'll have that as kind of like, okay, if I ever do a sparkler writing shot and I need to use this as a backup, I can go out and do mm -hmm. it. And it's really not that hard guys. It's pretty easy to do. I never really considered doing that on an exit. Like, you know, with sparklers, that's a super good idea just to have something as a foreground element because it really, it really pops here, whether or not that was the case on this shot or not. It just really, I think it adds something this really cool framing to it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, you know, sometimes they're not, you know, someone's face might be a little weird, mm -hmm. you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, yeah. so this just kind of masks all of that and you're just focused and frame and, you know, totally. it frames the couple properly. So it, it really does. It draws your attention right to them. You have nothing else to distract you on the sides. Love it, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hey, uh, Ritzy's asking the background flash. Is that right behind them or to the right? So this time is back to the right. You can kind of see down at the bottom. I'm shooting this on tungsten, so it's a bare flash that turns blue. That's okay. why you kind of get the blue in the in the, the smoke up there. Got it. Again, that's because I love complementary colors. You know, I love matching yeah. blues with oranges, and so uh, my go-to is 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 doing that. Uh, so oh. the front modifier probably has. In fact, no, it does. It'll have a. Ma uh, a gel, mag gel, um, mag grid, and a mag sphere. So it's all three of those for this, the front shot. Nice. And nice. I'm just, and I'm just on tungsten just to get that blue. So looks really good, man. Hey, yeah, um, Kevin, I, I apologize. I just realized it's already, we're 50 minutes into this show. So I, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Are you okay still going? Oh, totally. Yeah, okay. I can talk about myself all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I, it's funny because I just saw a comment on YouTube where somebody had said, hey, uh, not too much, you know, chat and get more to like the photos or whatever. But the interesting thing to me is as we're chatting here, I really, truly, for me, it's a learning process as well. And, you know, and I've done, yeah. I think this is the 95th episode of How I Shot It or whatever. And you would think that somebody had done that many episodes and watched these, they would have seen it all. But it's it's not the case. I like every single time I do these, I learn something new. And so... Like I'm, I'm sitting here learning and asking questions that I hope you know, will help me and help others that are watching. Right. So I hope people right. find value in it all. But yeah, um, well, that's what I love about this format is we're just talking like we're just on like on a Zoom meeting, just the two of us. So yeah, like talking about photos and like how we can learn from them. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, one other great. question really quickly came in. They're asking the difference between CTO and Orange Creative Gels. Um, really, and I'll kind of answer that. Really, the biggest thing on that is just the CTO is they're designed. Uh, to be nice and warm for the skin tones, where if you use an orange creative gel, it's really going to just make them orange. Uh, the CTO is going to bring warmth. The orange is going to bring orange. <laughs> and so while they might look similar, uh, if you hold them up, the CTO is going to be a little bit lighter and it's just not quite as saturated as the orange creative. So, yeah. And also to add to that, if I don't, if you don't mind, yeah. I use CTOs all the time if they have warm above, you know, reception lights, if they're really warm, just so I can match it. So there's not mixed lighting, which is why I CTOs are corrective gels, right? So yep, absolutely. Um, yep. yep, very cool. All right, Kevin. Now that I put ice in my mouth, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about this one. So this is the one non-wedding photo, but it's one of my favorites. This is a a couple we shot um, their engagement session like seven years ago, uh -huh. and every two or three years they come back to us for a different stylized shoot that they do. They go around the world every single year. Like they've gone to Paris, they've wow. gone to New England, and they dress up every single time. So this was during COVID, and they wanted to do like a Mad Max look. And so we did this amazing stylized shoot with them um, out, you know, in Joshua Tree. Yeah. And uh, this was at the end of the night. We were walking by. I was. We were saying goodbye. You can see in the background, it's the sun's almost gone. And um, I just wanted to do one more kind of cool shot and so this was this one we're, we're up in the game at this point now it's just three lights okay. so the setup is there's a there's a flash behind him right you can kind of see it kind of peeked through but it's supposed to be behind his head yeah but it kind of peeked through and it doesn't bother me that much because the I love atmosphere it. aerosol there yeah you know which kind of looks like you know and i used wanted to be warm so that we look kind of like dirty you know like kind of the mad max look so that was kind of the thought process because like blue or something like that wouldn't make sense with like a mad max look so i wanted to look you know, dingy and dirty and to match yeah. the mood. And so again, that's just a CTO gel back there. And then there's two more facing them at 90 degrees the same way. And if I, and more than likely those two were, were gridded because you can see it's just hitting their face a little bit in their front of their profile and then there's no spillage. 
Um, and so again, this was, so this was a little more complex with three and you have to, I think I had them on two different um, groups. So one was the background and the other two were hitting them in the exact, about the exact same power. Mm -hmm. They were the same, you know, distance apart. So I had three lights, three light stands. And this was kind of like the last shot before we got in our cars and drove away. You know, it, um, what I think is, is what I love about this shot is when you put the lights to the side of them. So I like to think of like a clock, right? So you have one, one light, right. three o'clock and nine o'clock and 12 o'clock basically. But right. I, I would almost say it was even like between like two and three o'clock and between nine and 10 o'clock, because you can see that shadow on her nose is the one that I'm looking at the most, um, yeah. which, which really brings out the definition. So it's not like this super bright light on them. It gives them that more, you know, like you're saying, kind of that grungy, that gritty look to them, which really works well. So it's almost like you had a, like a 12 o'clock, like a two and a half and like a nine and a half sort of, yeah, uh, is yeah. How you're, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah, because one of our one of our go to light patterns is short lit, which is more of yeah. that what you're describing. You know, I love short lit photos. Yeah. So, likewise, likewise, especially if you look at her hand, for example, and you see the shadows on her hand. You have a little bit of that rim light on the gun there. A little bit of rim light on the on the. Is it a bat that he's holding? A bat or a it's sword? A sword. Sword. It's yeah. Sword, yeah. So cool, man! Such a cool shot. I bet this is if, that if you're that couple and you get this shot, knowing that you're going for this, you know, you're dressed up and so forth. Like this has got to be so stoked for them, you know? Yeah, they were super excited. Yeah, yeah. It was their it was their COVID anniversary shoot. It was awesome. I love them. <laughs> they come back every few years, and it's amazing. So. That's really cool. That's one of my favorite things about this industry and this business is we literally are creating photos for people that it just brings them so much joy and for them to want to come back and, and have that experience again over and over throughout their lives. It's, it's such a cool, cool feeling. So yeah, it's the best. All right. So this last one, um, this is, this is the last shot. We actually have some video on this one too. So maybe describe it for us and then we'll kind of watch the video and, and, uh, it will help for those people who aren't super clear, uh, to hopefully bring some clarity. Certainly. Um, the thing I love about this shot, it's more on the complex side. You could do it where it's not as complex, but this actually had four flashes, uh, two in the, or two in the foreground on each set. So what it is, is it's a tabletop inside of a reception tent. Okay. You do this in a reception hall, anything like that. This one was just happened to be underneath a white, uh, a white tent or it had white draping. I can't remember. Um, and so I'm just shooting with a long lens, probably an 85 to a 7,200 more than likely probably seen the video because I can't remember, but I'm shooting usually with a longer lens to create more bokeh in the foreground. I'm shooting lights, colors, and be, you know, hitting those, those two in the foreground. And then I'm balancing it with a mag box at like six o'clock. And then in the very back, I also have a mag gel on a, on a speed light lighting up the top of the white tent. And again, I'm playing with complementary colors here, always orange and blues, that sort of thing, because I just love how it goes. I went to art school, so I love complementary colors. So. Yeah, absolutely. So it, I, again, how cool that you have a, a white tent that you literally made it blue, and then you use those complementary yeah. colors up front. So you're lighting up the glasses, you're lighting up the, the space behind them, and then you're putting light on them as well. I think the biggest thing on this, Kevin, that, that um, if, if I were watching this and wondering, how did you use a mag box on them and not wash out the colors in the foreground and stuff? What did you use the diffusion fabric or did you use the focus diffuser? It was the focus diffuser. Yeah. Focus diffuser. Yeah. That makes sense. I used. And so again, just to control the spillage. Another cool thing about this photo is in the video, if you look, they're surrounded by people. Hmm. Like this is off to the side, but there are, and in, in the video, hopefully you're not playing the audio because there's just, it's just noise. Cause there's like a hundred people, 150 people underneath that tent. And we're just like in this back corner, I set it up really quickly. And I've done it where, like, I think these had like three or four different, you know, centerpieces with, um, with uh, uh, candles in them. Yeah, I've done it where I've like stacked like big frames and done this shot as well. Uh, but this just happened to be one that I've done, you know, using four flashes and I wanted to kind of show case to the viewers that you can start as simple as you want to and build upon however much you want to go. So, <laughs> you know, what's so good about this. First off, you're making me feel lazy. Cause I, you know, every, you should be doing this <laughs> at every single wedding really, but what's cool it's about easy. this. Yeah, yeah. And what's cool is you can, instead of taking the couple even away from the venue, <clears throat> excuse me, to do an outdoor shot, you can just basically tell them, Hey, can I just steal you for two minutes off the dance floor right here? I'm already set up. I've already tested my lighting. Everything's good to go. Um, yeah. 
and and then what's what's fun about it kevin is you're literally doing something and everybody's you know if they look out of the corner of their eye or whatever they're kind of watching yeah and it's cool yeah. because they're seeing that you're out there still creating really cool and creative shots for your couple um and on top of that you get to kind of practice and have some fun doing something creative and then if it works the couple has a really cool shot if it doesn't <laughs> right you don't have to share it to them you know right exactly, exactly. It's like it never happened <laughs> so yeah yeah. Um, okay. Hey, let's show everyone this video here. So we got two videos. Uh, I, hopefully, I think I got the audio turned off, but if I didn't, I apologize, everybody. You're going to hear it loud. Uh, let's let's play it real quick here. There we go. All right. So I, I'm going to probably slow this down a bit so everybody can watch it. Um, in fact, I might even just back it up and just kind of go frame by frame here. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me see if I can control this in slow motion here. So we got there's the there's the cups, and you got the first flash on the table. It's lighting those up. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, and if and I'm looking at it, it looks like there's probably a CTO gel on there to warm it up even more and um, grids. Yeah, it looks like it looks a little thicker up there. So yeah. um, again, just to control that that, and then there's another flash probably right behind the other ones, or it's over there by those flowers. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Who's this good looking guy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's there's your mag box, okay? Yeah, and we got the I can see the focus diffuser there, so you're right on that. Um, it looks like you're using, is that just a nano stand right there? Yeah, it's just a nano stand. Yeah. Those oh. are, yeah. I'm impressed. Um, and then over here, this is the one that's lighting up the, the, the roof, right? The curtain. Yeah. Yep. And there's just a blue gel inside of the mag gel there. Nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah. You can actually see it flash right there. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So then let's, uh, let's say the second video, I think we actually see the couple in it as well. There we go. Okay, so you're nice and low. Got the look at that. You can actually see that that's the other flash on the table over there. Yeah, yeah. I moved it over to the other side. It looks like. Yeah, I love it. I love. Yeah, if I remember right, I, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say I think if I remember right, two flashes were too much, and so I ended up taking one away. But you, but depending on the situation, you could easily do this with four. You know, but it just ended, ended up having how, how it was. I only needed one. Uh, okay, shooting I'm across. I'm laughing because there's literally a la there's a lady sitting right behind them. Yeah, right behind. Yeah, like a few feet back, and you would have never guessed that from the photograph. But I'm just gonna take yeah. this back real quick and just show everyone. So we got that one flash right there by the flowers. We got yep. the uh, the big bat focus diffuser. I love it, dude. This this needs to be a a, a reel for Magmod. We need to throw this up on the Instagram back there. Good stuff, dude. Let's show that photo one more time as well, so everyone can see it. And you can't even see the lady in the red jacket in the background. <laughs> You'd never know. Yeah. It's a great thing about foregrounds. It's a great thing about shooting up into ceilings too. They're usually very, very empty. Yeah. So they're kind of a canvas to do whatever you want to. That is good, man. Good stuff. Dude, that's awesome. I think that was our last shot, right? Yeah. That was the last one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What but a thing, so. I, I say last one, but dude, you have so many great shots. I, I hope people that are watching this are, um, in fact, let me, I'm going to go bring it up one more time. I hope they go and give you a follow up on Instagram. Um, let me, let me actually pull this up here. In fact, you know what You're we're trying to, what, what was that? that? I was going to say, trying to figure out how to give you only five to seven was impossible. <laughs> you know, it was every, literally impossible. Every time I bring somebody on the show, I think that's probably the hardest task for him because honestly, all of Absolutely. you guys are so stinking good. Like it blows <laughs> my mind. But um, but guys, go check him out. Kevin, the only thing I'm going to tell you, and this is a tip for everybody, is it is time for you to start making these reels, boy. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I Julie does a great job. She does like three three reels a, a week on her boudoir page. I just, oh, really? I just can't do it. It's harder to do. Yeah, she does amazing. What, job what's her What's her boudoir Instagram? Julia K Studios. Julia K is just the letter K, K? A Y K A Y. Uh, K -A -Y. Yeah, Julia K A Y Studios. Is it? I'm sure it's clean enough that we can at least put it up here, right? Julia. K. Uh, most okay. Yeah, we won't. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, I mean like in, <laughs> Instagram will turn it down if it's not, but it's uh, it's probably it, it's a kid's show. We probably should. All sure. right. Well, Julia, it's K tasteful. Studios. It's very yeah. tasteful, but. Cool. We'll go check it out, guys. Maybe not. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, your work is amazing, dude. And and uh, likewise, over here, big shout out to both of you guys. Thanks. Good, good stuff. So definitely go give them a follow. And uh, if you know somebody getting married out in Southern California, you got a lot of people to choose from. But certainly check out Kevin and Julia for sure. It's been a pleasure, man. I, I feel bad that we went so long on a, on a what is it, Thursday night here? But I certainly That's appreciate you, you doing this. I, I apologize that I'm... Literally, I, I ran out of <laughs> soccer practice from my kids. Uh, I'm one of their coaches, and I got home, and I was like, 
trying to wipe the sweat away and i'm like all right we gotta do this show with kevin so yeah uh, awesome. but it's been it's been a lot of fun i i really enjoyed getting to know you and share share your photos with everybody i'm gonna ask you one last question if there's one yeah. tip for somebody that you've you've been doing this now for what'd you say nine ten years something like that yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. if there's one tip for somebody that was trying flash for the first time what advice would you give to them honestly you gotta practice Mm-hmm. Don't practice on a dance floor. Don't practice on the wedding. When we were first starting how to do off camera flash, I still have the photos somewhere, but we literally, um, Julie and I were figuring out how we were going to shoot dance floors and we were doing an X pattern and sandwich. So we had four flashes shooting in an X pattern and our subject was my dad. Mm-hmm. So my father was in his courtyard and he was twirling around, you know, <laughs> over and over and over again. So we could kind of like take turns to get the shot that we wanted. Yeah. And at some point after doing that in pitch black conditions, we were finally like, Hey, I think we got it. So it's practice, man. You just have to keep practicing. You have to keep doing it. Back when we first started, we used to practice all the time. I wish I had time to practice now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at the very beginning during the foundation, like we, we had to just to kind of figure things out. You have to experiment. I see your experiment to this day, like that first photo, I had no idea what was going to happen. Yeah. No idea at all. And yeah. it just, it, like I, I mentioned to the couple, this could turn out great or it's going to be awful. I have no idea, but you have to experiment. Just go yeah. out and do things. Yep. You know, and couples appreciate that. They, they, they like when you experiment and have some fun. Oh. It, it shows them that you're actually enjoying the experience as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. As opposed to just being cookie cutter and like want to just, you know, okay, my 90 minutes is up. I'm out of here kind of thing. It's like, Hey, can I yeah. have some fun with you guys? So. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And they were the right couple to do it. Just like they were both like in film What's great about like our branding and we, we kind of attract our ideal client is in film, music, some sort of creative field, like 99% of all of them. So they're all into it. So they're all excited nice. about it. That's cool, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Kevin, it's been a real pleasure. I, I really enjoyed Thanks, this. Jeremy. And uh, the entire time I've been jealous of your beard. Hopefully someday I'll <laughs> be there. But, uh, but no, it's, it's been a real pleasure. I Hopefully we're not too far from each other. We're like maybe five and a half hours or something. Hopefully we'll yeah. see each other in person here soon. Um, yeah. But uh, we'll take a Tucson trip this this fall, so maybe it'll work out. Please, yeah, actually, come on down. I'm actually about uh, an hour and a half north of Tucson myself. Magmod's office is in Tucson. Okay, uh, cool. But but I'm I'm about an hour and a half north. I'm just south of Phoenix, actually. But, uh, okay. but if you're if you're yeah. at Tucson, let me know. I'll, I'll come down and visit you. Um, Sounds good. And uh, please give our shout outs uh, and greetings over to Julia as well. We appreciate. Thank everything. you. Thank and you. And she's so out there doing good good service tonight. And we appreciate her doing that. And just we we just mm-hmm. hope she knows that we. Uh, acknowledge her as, as an instrumental part of this business as well. So hundred percent, hundred percent. Awesome. Kevin, you rock, man. Thank you. And thanks, thanks everyone Trevor. for tuning in guys. Again, uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, be sure to join the Magmod community on Facebook. It's a great community. You get to be part of, uh, I think it's like 90 something thousand photographers that are on there, which is incredible. And they're all sharing photos. And the really cool thing about it guys is when they share a photo in the caption, they also share how they created it, how they shot it. And so you get to learn like it's, I would say it's one of the best learning resources for photographers. So certainly check that out as well. I'd agree. With, I'd agree. with that, Kevin, we're going to close this show up again. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You guys have a good one. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Thanks again, Trevor. Bye. You bet. Thanks Kevin. Mm-hmm.